Bird with Mansfield on the forward flank. Catch to the left of screen. So the same old get the ball out of the centre. That's Essendon to half forward. Cockatoo's Collins, well done. McCurry duck, trying to get a handball away. Colbert's handball was good to King. He uh, showed a clear head there. Colbert to half forward. The up five got in the way. Fletcher with an opportunity. Some people will say nothing's changed in 100 years. The up, he made a, a bit of a blue there. Dolan couldn't take Ooh. the mark. A crash on McKinnon should get a free kick. Dart at centre wing. He's got a good leg, this young fellow. Can kick the footy, can give it a roost. Undecided, we mightn't see that opportunity. He puts himself under pressure, Riccardi goes. Mercedes in there, Tudor's over the top. Still uh, Essendon with Mercedes trying to get it to Fraser. Fraser can't, in there was Colbert. To Riccardi, beautiful hands. Burns can kick this on the left, he's got it. Some splendid work in there, including Riccardi and Colbert. And Geelong get the first. He's been an exciting first-year player, Ronnie Burns. So mercurial with the football. And here you see just uh, anybody's ball there, but uh, a half chance comes out from Colbert. He's doing that very well. Riccardi flips it out to Ronnie Burns, who makes no mistake. Yes, Ronnie Burns, the first for Geelong. Bounce in the centre, low bounce. Somerville thumps it 30 metres towards centre half forward. O'Connor comes out to meet it, gives it beautifully to Denham, then chips, and great play from the bomber sets up McCurry. An interesting matchup with Ryan O'Connor going with uh, the first year player in Stephen King, who is a noted ruckman, but starting across the half back line, picking up O'Connor. So Mark McCurry kicking from about 45, 47 metres, now has to go back. As the Geelong player on the mark comes forward to where he'd marked it on the ground. McCurry. Kicks gets underneath it. It's high. Across the point line and a behind. So a quick reply, but it's only a point. And Essendon trail by five. They missed a few in Sydney, didn't they, last week? The Bombers from uh, relatively easy shots. So not the start they wanted. McCurry normally you'd back him in. Shoal short. Mansfield, the old one two, back to Shoal. Runs to half back, then kicks the ball to centre wing. Not a good kick. McGrath did very well against Cummings. A little toe poke by Denham. Now McCurry, another touch. Danaher. Well played. Harvey in trouble. Gets his kick as Burns pressures him. Hocking again. Denham did beautifully. McCurry after it. Towards centre wing out of play. He just was not on song last Friday night in Sydney, McCurry. Such a skillful young player. And let's hope he can have a big one tonight. The constabulary here tonight, and they're right in the thick of it, enjoying it. What great seats they've got. All dressed up, but with somewhere to go. Somerville, McGrath, and also Pickering, who tossed the coin tonight for Geelong, and the ball out of play. So I another boundary throwing. So I hate to say this, but they look like zebras running towards you, Jared. <laughs> I'm not they sure do, if yeah. I do like it. The stripes <laughs> are pretty uh, striking, aren't they? Yeah, boundary throwing, centre wing, Barnes and Somerville. Barnes taps back. Pack of players in underneath. Some good hard stuff. O'Donnell almost. Mercedes in over the top. Comes back out to Doolan. He kicks the ball around towards the boundary line. Denaher runs at it and then fumbles it and has been called off the leg. So a free kick will go to Colbert, right in front of the members, and a huge crowd here. Lee Colbert, one of the acting vice captain youngsters, chips. Ooh. Oh. Sanderson's copped a heavy one from Cockatoo Collins. No 50 metre penalty. Oh, well, there you go. Well, it did appear uh, that there was a 50 metre penalty uh, due, but early in the game, the umpire elected to go for safety. Heard flew first, Hocking was at the back, Danaher, Harvey went to ground, Brewer after it, Burns, clever, very clever to McKinnon, was going to handball, then goes with a high one to fall forward, Mitch and also Wellman, Fraser gets back, controls it pretty well to Doolan, Doolan away, uses Harvey, Harvey close to the boundary line, squeezes it not far enough, straight to Couch, Couch centering ball, Oh, there's a heap of cats there. Take your pick. Buddha takes it in the heart of the square. Out wide to Tudor. Gets him. Long way from goal. Chips away cleverly. Barnes has made the move and marks. 
Well, already Geelong showing some dominance in the middle of the ground. They're getting the ball into their forward 50. We've seen Ronnie Burns a couple of times uh, show some electrifying skills. And now they should just about get their second goal on the board. Go short, Colbert didn't find him completely. Then in the pocket, brings it back close. It might be a goal. He's happy. That's Pickering, quick kick out of the centre, falls to Doolan. Needs support from behind, another handball's missed, going back. Brewer runs onto it, overruns it, then taps it cleverly onto McKinnon. Meeting it well is Grenville, gives it off to Harvey. Harvey almost caught again, kicks out wide. Only Geelong there, Pickering can set it up. Kicks to Minch, can't grab hold of it. And the ball over the boundary line and out of bounds. Gerald, I was just interested, uh, this was the start of the season. Michael Long sitting on the bench there. They only played 14 home and away games in 1897. We've already played with seven rounds of Lightning Premiership in an Ansett Cup Series. My word, things have changed in 100 years. Brownless. Oh, Billy Ducks on the left foot. Kicks from 45 metres. The crowd's happy. Another Geelong goal. Third goal to Geelong. And really is a bright start now. Just what Billy needed. Blistering pace there shown from Billy and uh, perhaps they wouldn't have kicked it on their non-preferred side like that uh, 100 years ago Malcolm but they would have been just as happy with the end result Geelong killing them in the middle got Hocking on Denham Couch on Chris Danaher and Pickering on Masiti the Pivotonians are well on top early the same olds will have to lift O'Donnell's handball Doolan has to concede Brewer Brownless well done, O'Donnell. Very well done. Brilliantly played by the captain, but he had to give it up a bit too much in the end. McKinnon, back to Brown. It's a long way from goal. Looks for a free, gets it. Had a jumping in front. No doubt he had no control. Pushed it away and won a free kick at centre wing. No one on the mark. Billy can run on here. He does, and then kicks the ball to the goal square. Nearly Tanner front spot. And what was a slow start for Essendon is starting to become crucial. Well, they've been famous in the, this season for their second half fade-outs, but uh, if they don't get their act together shortly, there won't be any chance to have a fade-out. They really will need a big comeback. Geelong have just dominated the game to date. The ball has hardly been across the half-forward line for Essendon. And they're coming in now for their fourth goal. From point-blank range. He's given it a push, but it looks like it's through. Tanner gets his first, and the Cats stream away now. 24 to 1. Well, four goals is, uh, isn't a big lead in football, but it's probably just the way that they've achieved this, Geelong. They really are dominating almost in every position that the ball has been to. And Kevin Sheedy may have to throw his side around and get some... Ball out of the middle. G Hawking brilliantly across to McKinnon. Hurd has to sit and wait and does it beautifully. And this is Kevin Judy's uh, usual ploy to, to put the stop on a run on. James Hurd do centre half back. Yes, Tanner Hurd now looks back towards centre half forward. Harvey off and long coming on in front of us. Ball kicked forward. One on one contest, Shoal and Buick. And the ball heads towards the boundary line and out. Amazingly, in 1897, sorry to do this to you, Jared, the Cats kicked 24 points, three goals, six that day for the entire game. They've already got it in nine minutes, 100 years later. But I think the field was about three miles long <laughs> in those days, Melbourne. <laughs> and in fact, played 20 aside. King and O'Connor. O'Connor does well, but gives it off to Tanner. Players at it, long into the action immediately. King wants to go off the ground, then tries to hit it out wide to Mercedes. Pocket to Collins. Looks back in towards the middle. Kick doesn't quite find. Buick has to give it off. Another backward hand pass. They've had to do this four or five times, Essendon. They're losing ground. Can they set it up this time? They can. Yes, those other handballs have been across half back and they've been costly. 
So Mark McCurry with his second set shot at goal. Bit closer in this time. 45 degree angle. He's done exactly the same. He's pulled it to the left. So a disappointing kick there for McCurry. Their second point. Geelong with four goals. Geelong bench about to go for a warm up. Kilpatrick and Hall and Simpson. So McCurry's missed a couple. That, um, that was an important one. They need something to, uh, to steady up here. Giving Geelong a handy start. Barnes. Strong mark. Somerville in strong at the back. And Peter Riccardi is uh, pushed down from the wing and he now is standing in the goal square alongside uh, Mensch. Here's a replay of this incident. Good work from Barnes being in front and an excellent kick out. And just a little bit of uh, interest on the side there from Peter Somerville. Barnes to centre wing. Colbert his target. O'Donnell slipped at the back. Hocking. Still hocking. Couldn't quite keep it in Mercedes with him. And Gary will pick himself up. What a career he's had. Three best and Ferris. So close to Brownlow medals. He's polled extremely well over the years. O'Donnell, Sanderson, Colbert, eased it forward, McKinnon. O'Donnell and Colbert there. Denham, clever, Mercedes, Doolan in trouble, back to Denham, normally clever, or oh, Doolan's handle cut off by Tudor, a chance, important ball, standing his ground very well was Pryor, did a wonderful job, Grenvold kicks a beauty to Danaher, they need something from this attack Essendon, that's an excellent kick to Cummings, well played, and Pryor was the man who stood tall when they needed somebody at the back, Gary Ayres we saw a moment ago, and Danaher's kick was spot on, and uh, this young man missed a couple in Sydney, but he did kick three there. And Cummings has got a good return this season. He's booted 13 from three. He's had a six, a four, and a three. And the Bombers need this. Tight his angle. Good kick. He's got it. It's a sign of a good player. One, two to four goals. Well, we know he is an excellent kick. He had an aberration last weekend in Sydney when he missed one from five metres out. But here's Grenville bursting out of the centre. Chris Danaher did an excellent job on Nathan Buckley a couple of weeks ago. He's got another pretty big job tonight on Paul Couch. But an excellent kick when one was needed, Bruce. As you say, sign of a good player. Somerville belts the ball forward 30 metres. O'Connor over it. Socked it off the ground. Comes out to Long. Gets rid of it under pressure. Now taps it back beautifully to Doolan. Comes back inside again. The kick doesn't carry. McGrath comes out to meet it. Punches it aggressively. Long magic on the boundary line. Certainly. Can he set it up? No, he can't. Beautifully read by Sanderson. And Sanderson holds up that attack for the Bombers. To Barnes, to Scholl. Scholl in the back pocket. Goes to half-back. Finds his man in Tudor. Tudor runs on quickly and now goes to centre wing where Tanner could have a paddock. He can go away here. Lopes away in the end. Directs beautifully to centre half forward. Mitch takes a splendid mark. It was a great build up by the Cats. He hasn't kicked a lot of goals this year, Mitch, but he is a goal kicking forward. Riccardi gives him an option. Could he thump it from 55? He gets under it. It's a floater in the end. Brownless. Now, I hope there's a decision, if not as a freak, as a goal, but it's going to Essendon, hanging on. Well, the umpire closer than us, but uh, I'm sure Kevin Sheedy will be a little bit concerned at the distance that Shaycock or two Collins is giving Tanner, who has been instrumental in the last few minutes. Curry kicks it, and the umpire's bringing it back. And it must have been just prior to kicking, so McCurry will take this kick again. Has a player out wide, it's prior. Bryer can run. Brownless is after him. Really needs a leading Essendon player. Has one out wide. Couch with Danaher. Keeps his feet. Beautifully stolen by Fraser. Also, again, Couch backs up. And Riccardi finds himself now in some space. And chips the ball to McKinnon. Back to Riccardi. Mitch with his back to the play. So he can't kick it to him. Brownless in front. Fletcher over the top. Hocking. Very aggressive in his approach to Fletcher. And the ball's forced out of bounds. Ryan O'Connor at centre half forward uh, at the moment, Melvin. Usually he plays in the ruck against Barnes. Yes, he has done that, Jared, a few times. He's quite right. So boundary throw in. Sanderson over the pack. 
heard almost. Fraser goes back. They will persist with a handball back. They're going to be in trouble again because it bounce sits beautifully for Mensch to Tudor. Oh, out to Barnes. Barnes kicks and has kicked poorly. So almost a wasted opportunity as the ball is now forced over by Denham and Riccardi. Big miss for Barnsley. Four goals to 1-2. See his reaction to the kick. Disappointment. He's got the haircut to really go with the night as uh, Simons comes on and Cockatoo Tollins has come off. So uh, Kim and Cheedy agreeing with um, Jared Healy's, Healy's sentiments a moment ago. Good mark uh, after Denham's kick by Danaher. Danaher centering to O'Connor. It's just oh. always going to be a big stretch, but goes again. Reeves the ball, but O'Donnell now under pressure. Hocking. It'll be a bounce right in the heart of the centre square. 24 to 8. Colbert's got a goal. Burns, Tanner and Brownless for Geelong. And Cummings for Essendon. And her just pushing uh, into the forward line again now for Essendon. Free kick going to the Cats. Against uh, O'Connor Barnes. Can uh, drive forward. Burns or prior. It'll be a free kick. High and over the top. Burns at 52 metres. Riccardi back there. Brownless got up high. Denham may have to concede. He does. It's a behind. Well, strangely, Denham was the only one at the front of the pack there. Nobody roving the ball for Geelong. Perhaps that was Burns' role, but obviously he was the one kicking the ball down. Had 50 metres to cover, but perhaps a better spot there for Peter Riccardi. So Pryor kicks into Fraser. Back to Pryor. Now sets up Hurd. Has to go back into the middle because that's where a bomber player is. And a lovely kick almost to Danaher. King lumbers back. Now they've tapped one back Geelong. So Sanderson's under pressure and caught. Simons does well in the tackle. Fantastic stuff from Scholl and caught high and played the free. The well, bomber supporter's not happy about that, but uh, if you take somebody high, you pay a penalty. Great mark to Colbert. Enormous pressure from O'Donnell. Fantastic play from the youngster to Hocking. Now caught, ran out of space, and almost had to give the ball up. Massini did read it beautifully across half-back. Now looking towards the boundary line, and the safety of that does he find. Once again, we're seeing James Hurt uh, running from the half-forward line to the half-back line, picking up plenty of possessions. But you just get the feeling that if Essendon are going to win this game, they need Hurt to dominate the forward line. Somerville out of the air, couldn't get a clear kick. Couch was in there, Doolan trying to get through. And uh, yeah. is there a blood rule here against uh, O'Donnell? David Howlett calling it. O'Donnell checking where it was, maybe on the back of the arm. Just back to James Hurd. It's uh, last week he got probably yeah. by just, miles best on the ground. Sorry, Jared. See how slow he's walking off here. What they're going to do is try and get the coach. <laughs> to set up a player to know where he goes. That's what the hold-up is, trying to... Sometimes you don't see it. Sorry, Lee. No worries. But uh, James Hurd, 30 possessions last week. Best on ground. Essendon lose. Maybe he's better having 10 possessions and kicking seven goals. Somerville to Couch to Sanderson. Getting touches. High ball or free kick against Brownless, surely. He was a long way up, but uh, interfering. Fletcher's got it. Casual and careless kick, really. But uh, Denham had some space. And now he should be able to set something up. He runs his full measure. That's not a great kick either to centre wing. Danaher read it well. couchy has got him. Handball by O'Connor. Cut off. King under pressure. Close to the line. Maybe a bit of an experience there. There was nowhere that ball was going to go except out on the fall. There's Brownless going very early on Fletcher. I don't think anyone will ever argue about that one. So he brought the horse and saddle from out the front there, Bruce. He, he took sure did. Went for a ride. O'Connor coming inside to set a half forward. Somerville there. Goes early. Danaher attacks. A couple of Geelong players, including Colbert and Tanner, run into him hard and fairly. Out to Mercedes. Good kick to Harvey. Will he go on? Could have almost. This is about his distance. He's going to go short now to Pryor. Gets him. Ten metres closer. 
more difficult angle sometimes the short pass in that situation you want the next one to be a certain goal and this one's not quite is it it's, it's tantalizingly close kick from 40 meters Essendon coming back at Geelong it looks good off the boot it's a goal So the Bombers coming back, we've seen a couple of occasions tonight where defenders have drifted forward and kicked goals from set shots. It's 14 to 25. Well, he's got terrific skills, Michael Pryor, and we just see him executing a lovely set shot. And a particularly good goal when you consider his burst off the half-back line to get it. Oh, Barnes out the middle, chips it beautifully to Brewer. Wants to go wide and finds McKinnon. So the left footed, ex Crow. 60 metres out. It's a lovely long kick. It's right deep, very deep indeed. I think there's a mark call play on by up by David Howlett. The crowd behind the goals are usually pretty good judges and David Mintz comes up and slams the ball on the ground. And unfortunately, I don't think that the umpire could see that. But uh, David Mintz, you're pretty quiet, lad. He was pretty upset that he didn't get paid the mark. Brownless hits it back. Stack of players right in the forward pocket. Only 15 metres. And here's that mark. That is a clear mark, Jared. Well, absolutely. I think man in front, he had first possession and brought it down, and he'd be most irate. And the irony of it all, Essen ended up with a free kick, and it goes to Hurd. Oh, under pressure, oh. gone. Don't see that too often. Just uh, it was a got disorientated, didn't he? He did, because he was clear, and he backed into trouble. Hocking receives it from Brewer, goes to full forward. Riccardi, front spot. Fraser punches it away. Tudor. Miss Pickering, Mercedes got hold of it. Cats kicked the first four. Essendon have come back with the next couple. Harvey, who went to the interchange and came back when O'Donnell came off for the blood rule. Harvey, a probing kick. Good one, too, to Simons. An excellent result. Simons at centre wing. Cummings on a lead. Gets a favourable bounce. Turns McGrath. Then a little left footer. Buick onto it now. He's had to concede too much ground to kick a goal. Under pressure, threw it in the end, no free kick. Simons has handled out wide. Danaher doesn't know whether to kick it or go for goal. He goes for goal, bouncing ball, he's got it. And the Bombers have charged back now. It's 3-2 to 4-1. Well, just in the last couple of minutes, the, the decision's going with the Bombers. Just have a look at this for a throw. That was an absolute beauty. There was another one from Joe. But uh, it didn't perturb Chris Danaher, who just moved around nicely. Did his customary cut to the right and kicked a pretty good goal. O'Donnell on. So it's a five-point ball game. Doolan in the centre. Kicks it out wide. Leading in the race to it is McCurry. Has to wait and prop. O'Donnell back on the ground after the blood roll to Harvey. Here they go, back again to Denham. Now he's got some space, now he can run hard. Looking for the big fellas. Cummings pushes out and has been seen by up by Gavin Doyle. Tim McGrath will take the resultant free kick. It was a clear as day push out. Yes, so Tim McGrath comes back into the centre. Wants to use Barnes. Back to McGrath. This didn't really chase hard then. It was all set up for McGrath to kick it long. Brownless early. Over the back, Danaher caught. Players going to ground. It's a bit slippery, the ground. Doolan has to sit and wait over it. Wilman finds some traffic and hurt, hurt away. At centre wing, kicks a beauty to Cummings. They're enjoying this at the moment, Essendon. Couch off the ground, by the way, for Geelong and Kilpatrick on. He can get the distance coming, so goal score is completely vacant. Buick has drawn Scholl away, and there's nobody still in the goal square. Now King coming back with Somerville. There's Buick and Scholl. 
heard um, just the worst for wear from home. Might be winded. Brian Wood out there just having a chat, and uh, he's so important. And so is this young man, the 22-year-old, who kicked eight goals on this ground in his debut a couple of years ago. He's 52 metres out. He's kicked it magnificently. Suddenly, the Bombers have hit the front. The same olds lead the Pivotonians 4-2 to 4-1. Well, a great comeback uh, by Essendon to now hit the lead, only by a point. But I think where they're getting, they're catching Geelong out is with the long kick into the forward line. There's been a couple now, one from Harvey and this one from Hurd, kicking through the lines. And the Geelong defenders, right, right up against the wall, just aren't anticipating that their man will be the one coming in for the chest mark. So one point ball game, Somerville. Barnes with a quick handball. Red by Essendon. Now the ball falls to them. King runs across and chops it out. Does well, the youngster. McKinnon under pressure. Has to go for the wide. Boundary line will beat them all. So the noise has really lifted here. There's now two sides playing this game. In the first few minutes with Geelong scooting away. It was very quiet in spots. Somerville. Big fist from behind. Riccardi caught. Look for the free. Masidi back again to Doolan under pressure. Pickering in front. Can't get hold of it. Burns. Oh, he now walked into a bit of trouble. And that is a free kick. Holding the ball. Good play on advantage. McCurry. Clever kick on the outside of the boot to Danaher. This is this long kicking Jared was talking about. It goes again. Almost to Cummins. Great steal there from Scholl. King on the ground. Has to wait for it. And back to Sanderson and relieves towards the middle of the ground. Puts Kilpatrick under the hammer and then he should give a free kick away to Mercedes. Look, high, the first one, not paid. Riccardi pushes it towards Pickering, concedes, back to Danaher, back to O'Connor, left foot to half forward, Harvey for no Buick front spot. McCurry didn't have any acceleration, he was flat footed. Sanderson was there, the handball by Scholl was good. Tanner in the back pocket, squeezed Riccardi, was at a half volley, it was play on call. Clever Riccardi, back turned beautifully. Steady's on the left leg to Center wing burnt. Clever player. Took the mark. So instinctive, Ronnie Burns. He's working it all out now. Chips, Brownless. There's always a 50 50 ball only. Just set up for Fletcher. And James Hurd has uh, shown his intent to follow Shane Brewer wherever he goes. And so Gary Ayres has pushed Brewer straight into the goal square. Where he can play quite well, but the big bonus here is taking Hurd out of the play. Oh, it's out. Barnes got rid of Somerville. That's Burns has tackled. Ball. Clever kick from Barnes off the ground, and the mark's been paid to Brownless. So, a bit of luck there for the Cats. And Billy, you'd think, kicking from probably 50 metres. Let's just have a look at that. That is clearly holding the ball. And there is the siren. Incorrect disposal. Well... Perhaps this is uh, the square up for the Cats. So Brownless with one. Kicks right on 50 metres. It's a big kick. And he's hooked it. So would you believe the scores are all tied up? 4-2 apiece. 26. A fantastic first quarter. The first bit Jared won by Geelong. Essendon came back in the second half of it. Well, obviously, Geelong looked fantastic in the first five minutes. They went uh, bang, 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 bang with four goals.